Hello dear friends, today we are going to talk about barbed wire. You will learn how a quite peaceful invention became a real nightmare for the infantry. Its bloody hour came in the First World War, when its production was already mechanized. Wire was also made by dragging method. Iron bar was successively dragged through a series of holes of smaller diameter, until the wire of desired thickness was obtained. It was very time-consuming and expensive. Only in the 19th century, when the process was mechanized, did the wire be Come cheaper. In 1872, a farmer Henry Rose from Illinois invented a new kind of fence, a wire fence. It consisted of planks with attached pieces of sharpened wire. He patented his invention in May 1873 and demonstrated it at an agricultural show in the summer. Joseph Gleaton came up with a simpler fence. It looked like sharp wire on wooden supports. Gleden made the spikes with a coffee crusher and wrapped them around the wire. To keep the spike from shifting, they were in turn wrapped around with wire. In the United States in 1875, 270 tons of barbed wire were produced. By 1900s, production had increased to 150,000 tons. All of it was intended for agricultural use. The first military use of barbed wire occurred during the Spanish-American War of 1898, and British Army began to use it extensively during the Anglo-Boer War. British Army used it to make barricades along the railroad tracks. You could find double barbed wire hedges along the rails. They also were block houses and troops armed with machine guns. Every unit was divided with certain gaps. Such fortifications were virtually insurmountable for partisan detachments on horses, while scouts who cut the wire became easy targets for machine gunners. Another application of the wire fences was the isolation of Boer people who had not taken part in hostilities – women, children and the elderly. So the first concentration camps appeared, and the barbed wire was one of the main elements of their arrangement during Anglo-Boer War. During the Russian-Japanese War, barbed wire was first used to protect trenches on the battlefield. That was also the first time when sections of the barbed wire were connected to electricity. And during the First World War, wire fences on crossed bars became an obligatory attribute of the battlefields. Armies used a lot of wire to protect their trenches. 10 or even 20 rows of barbed wire were commonplace. That's when the Bruno spiral also appeared. It was a wire spiral which could be manufactured at the factory and delivered in a compact form in a special cylindrical tin case. The case would open and the spiral of barbed wire would unravel, producing 10 meters of ready wire fence, which only had to be secured to the ground with wooden stakes. Before the First World War, the militaries of all countries did not pay much attention to barbed wire. They recognized its usefulness as an additional element of the field fortification protection, but no more than that. It was believed that combat operations in the future war would be maneuverable. Before the World War, many infantry units of all its future participants didn't even have their own shovels for digging trenches, and barbed wire was considered to be excessive at all. Besides, by experience of the Russian-Japanese war, it was considered that the infantry would easily overcome it. It would be enough to throw an infantry overcoat over barbed wire and run over it. As a last resort, the wire will be torn during the preliminary cannon fire of the barbed wire fence. A single row of barbed wire without covering fire was indeed easy to overcome. But the densely layered barrier of barbed wire was already becoming a serious obstacle. It turned out that even heavy artillery fire would not be able to get through most of the barbed wire. But the infantry's worst nightmare was the combination of barbed wire and heavy machine gun fire. During the attack, the soldiers were vulnerable to enemy fire, and any delay was often fatal. If the wire fence was intact, it took time to get through it somehow, and slowed infantry troops became real prey to enemy machine gunners. If gaps and openings in the fence were created, the attacking soldiers crowded in front of them, again becoming a very convenient target for machine gunners. One could try to crawl to the enemy's trenches, but it was slow and very difficult. Besides, it was still necessary to overcome the wire fence somehow. 
The enemy who was watching the neutral line would immediately notice a new gap in the fence and could fire at the suspicious spot. Only the appearance of tanks provided an opportunity to get out of the positional dead end, as the barbed wire could not frighten a tank. That's all for today. If you enjoyed this video, please like it and don't forget subscribe to the channel. Bye everyone, see you later.